Uh, now, Labour, we move on, don't we? Have to talk mm. about Labour. Do we have to talk about Labour? We yes, do. we do. Uh, Labour is ready for a general election, according to Sir Keir Starmer. Yes, so much so uh, that the uh, confident uh, Labour leader said the sooner the, it's called, the better. And he's claimed his uh, manifesto has uh, been locked away for over a year in an exclusive interview with GB News. Now, polls suggest that Sakir will gain a majority at the next general election, uh, which is expected to be in either the spring or the autumn. Probably the autumn, though. Um, uh, joining oh. us to discuss this is the political commentator, John Oxley. And, John, I suppose, t'was ever thus, opposition leader calls for general election. Yes, definitely. But we're entering that period where we know an election is coming very soon. The last possible date it can be is sort of January, the year after next. Mm. That's bad, I think, for the government for a number of reasons. So chances are they're going to go a bit earlier. And so it's kind of the end game. You know, the run into the election is starting. And if you're Keir Starmer, of course, you want to seem ready for it, ready to fight and ready to govern. It's interesting, of course, he was uh, this week on a visit to the, the Russian border at a NATO outpost. There was a certain amount of criticism for the clothes that uh, Sir Keir Starmer chose to wear, wearing military uniform, having not been a member of the armed forces himself. Um, but I suppose this is a, a more common theme of politicians cosplaying. Absolutely. Um, you know, we see a few months ago Rishi Sunak went training with some soldiers. He dressed up. Boris was a huge fan of um, dressing up in military fatigues or dressing up as policemen on another occasion. Um, and Liz Truss tried to sort of channel Thatcher at one point with her bulletproof vest on top of a tank. Um, and it's mm. starting to become part of par and parcel of looking like a prime minister. And I think that's mm. part of what... It's, it's quite Starmer's a good look do. for it. This looks like a sort of new hard-hitting drama that you might see uh, on it's, Netflix. It looks like the new <laughs> SAS Who Dares Win, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculous. He's in Estonia. Don't need to wear fatigues there. There's nothing going on. There's no war going on. Yet. Yet. OK, well, yeah. But... I don't know. One of the reasons there's a NATO base there is that the Estonians are pretty worried about Russia, Yeah, I, I know they are. But at the moment, he could have just worn just ordinary civilian mm. gear, couldn't John, he? when did this change? Because I, I'm fairly sure uh, David Cameron didn't dress up in military clothes. Yeah, it seems to be a sort of Boris Johnson innovation. You look at some of the photos, you know, David Cameron kind of did his Cotswold dad thing. He turned up actually much like I'm dressed today <laughs> with a collared shirt and a jumper and some chinos. Um, and then you look back, um, you know, Gordon Brown, uh, Tony Blair, when they visited the troops, they'd often wear... They, they'd take their jacket off, but they would be wearing a suit, although that was slightly different. They were visiting, you know, troops in active war zones. Mm. It, it kind of looks a bit sillier, I think, if you're wearing a uniform alongside people who are actually fighting. Mm. Whereas this is going out and training. But, you know, I think maybe Margaret Thatcher did it once or twice, but it was quite rare um, for prime ministers to sort of put on the gear. But it's becoming more of that thing of looking authoritative, looking a bit more as though you're, you're mucking along with the troops rather than going out there as the person who sends them into war. When, when Sir Keir does come back and get back into his civics, um, he has admitted that he's worried about the effect being PM will have on his family. And we saw those fairly horrible scenes where Rishi Sunak's home was invaded by the eco-protesters that climbed all over it. Um, it's, it's right to be concerned, isn't it? Because, the, I mean, the contempt that, you know, politicians are held in these days is quite frightening. I think that's, that's very true. And it's, you know, not just for senior government ministers. You see it a lot from MPs talking about the impact on their family, particularly those who have young children, mm. school-aged children. There's much more of people getting, you know, getting aggressive, whether it's on social media or often in real life as well. But I think the other thing, particularly when you're going in at the prime minister level, um, you know, it's a whole change to your world. There's a massive security threat. You cease to be a normal person. You're living in 10 Downing Street. And I think that's something that all of the recent politicians, prime ministers, have really had to deal with. And it's, it's quite a tough aspect of the job, because ultimately, you know, you're getting the kudos of being prime minister. It's your name in the history books. Your partner, your children, mm. you know, they get a lot of the downside and, and really not much of the upside. So I think it is a natural thing to be worried mm. about. Now, if we're to believe the polls, the Labour Party is going to win a Tony Blair-style landslide, perhaps even larger. Is there anything the Tories can do in the next 12 months to turn that around? It's a very difficult question. I mean, you look at some of the headwinds today, the ONS saying we might be slipping into, um, into a recession. Traditionally, the polls narrow. 
when an election comes round, you get your messages about what you might do for a next term. But it's hard for the Conservatives. They've annoyed a lot of their voters, both on the left and on the right side. It's hard to pull those back in together at the same time. They're losing in, a different, in different geographies, in different demographic groups. There's lots of things you potentially can do, but it's hard to do all of them, and it's hard to know which is the one that's going to deliver the best. Mm, it seems like the government's almost oscillating. A lot. On one day of the week, it will sound like they're going for a red wall strategy, going hard on migration. And on the next day, they bring David Cameron back into government and look like they're going for a southern blue wall strategy. There's, there's, there's no clear sense of direction. It's almost like people are pulling from different angles within number 10. Yeah, I think that's very true. And that's the problem for the Conservatives, because the voters are doing the same. They have the same problem with their MPs, different factors going in. Um, different directions and obviously in politics everyone thinks their policies are the popular ones no one ever says oh personally i think we should be a bit more left wing but actually the voters are more right so everyone always says my ideas they're the ones that are going to win <laughs> so it's hard to navigate between those and particularly you've been in power for 14 15 years you've got a lot of built up on popularity with all sorts of people and the economy's not going particularly well other things aren't going particularly well it's a hard hard battle to fight, I think, for the next year. It's all very confusing, isn't it? There's so it much is. division in both main parties. You do wonder how much parties like Reform are going to take away mm. at the next But election. also, incumbents all around the world. We saw the New Zealand government lose. We're going to see mm. real trouble in France. We saw what happened in the Netherlands. We, I think at this time in Canada as well, the opposition yes. party, miles ahead in the polls, yeah. at this time when the globe is experiencing these financial pressures, opposition parties do well. Yeah, absolutely. But there was a shot before with John Major, wasn't there? So anything's possible. <laughs>